having some issues lately where I have been in awful flare-ups and in a lot of pain. So if you've noticed that I haven't really been like on the ball with making videos like I first started, that's why. I have been in a significant amount of pain and just trying my hardest to get through it. So today I wanted to make a video on what fibromyalgia is and what exactly it means, uh, what living with it is like. Um, and I think this is really important because uh, not a lot of young people have fibromyalgia, first of all. It's mostly common between women who are over the age of 50. So most people, when I told them I have fibromyalgia, they're just like, oh, okay, cool. What's that? <laughs> and most people don't know because it's, it's something that older people deal with, mostly. Um, not a lot of people that are younger are diagnosed with fibromyalgia. However, it seems I'm in a lot of fibromyalgia support groups online and different things, so it seems like more younger people are starting to have it. I don't know if that has something to do with genetics or just it's becoming well, more like well known in the medical community or what exactly is going on, but um, I am noticing a lot more younger people who have it. Um, but yeah, so anyways, I wanted to educate you guys so you know what fibromyalgia is and if you meet somebody that has it, you'll know how to respond or know exactly what they're talking about or God forbid if you ever have the symptoms and issues that you may know what's going on because it took me two years and honestly it may be longer than that that I was in pain. Um, the fibromyalgia kind of like starts gradually or it can. Um, but yeah, it took me two years to figure out that that's what was going on. For the longest time, I just thought like, oh, I'm just, I'm not feeling great, or I'm tired today, or, you know, um, like I would get colds often, so I thought maybe it's just a cold. But, you know, after two years of these symptoms not going away, you start to figure out, like, something's going on here. By the way, I have a joint. I'm going to light that up now. So yeah, uh, like I said, God forbid any of you ever have these symptoms, but I wanted to let you know what they are, just in case, you know, you may have it. So fibromyalgia is a illness that causes, most commonly causes widespread pain. Um, among that, it also causes uh, muscle pain, muscle spasms, muscle weakness, um, just general sensitivity. Like, I'm really, really sensitive to cold. That's why, like, I could never move to Colorado, logically. Um, I, like, my whole body hurts, like, to, like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like it goes down to the core of my being. It hurts so bad when it gets really cold. With fibromyalgia, it's like everything's turned up. It's like you have a volume control in your whole life. And it's turned all the way up. So you feel everything. Like, let's see what examples. Even like going in the grocery store. Um, like I thought for the longest time. I don't, honestly, it may be some of my PTSD symptoms. But fibromyalgia also causes you to be overly sensitive to those kind of things. Like to smell, to sound, to taste. You're just, you're, everything is heightened. Your pain receptors, everything. So, this joint keeps going out. So for instance, what would be like a normal workout to somebody? For me, if I do a workout, I feel it in my muscles everywhere the next day. It's like I got hit by a bus. It's like every tiny little thing that most people wouldn't notice uh, that people with fibromyalgia do. I think I gotta go into help. It was like, you interrupt for a second. No one knows the cause of fibromyalgia. Um, there's a lot more research out there now. But no one really knows the cause right now. Um, I believe that it's genetic for me because my mom had it. 
So that would just make sense that it would be genetic. Um, I know that there's been a lot of studies out now on um, what was it that uh, people with fibromyalgia have a certain gut bacteria going on. So I don't know if the fibromyalgia itself causes that or if the gut bacteria is what causes like the inflammation and pain. They're looking into that as an option. Um, the fibromyalgia test that I had tests for certain, um, I believe, proteins that are in your blood. So um, again, that could be something that is either causing it or is a symptom of it. Nobody really knows the cause. And no one knows how to treat it. Well, let me correct that. No one knows how to cure it. There are treatment methods, even though most of them are not great. Weed is a really, really great treatment method. Cannabis is amazing for fibromyalgia. Um, dabs particularly help me a lot. They are my favorite when it comes to chronic pain. Indicas, dabs of indicas, wonders on <laughs> my chronic pain. Um, But the other things out there are like, like I'm on Lyrica, which is a uh, nerve pain medication. And it kind of works. But it, it doesn't, <laughs> in the sense of like, it doesn't really take away all of the symptoms I have. It kind of just slightly turns it down, but not really enough to do much. Um, opiates are good for fibromyalgia, but they're highly addictive and they stop working after a little bit. So it's not exactly the most effective method. Um, I also take muscle relaxers and that helps me at night to sleep a lot, but I don't like that it affects my dreams. I stop dreaming because of it and I feel lethargic the next day. And just generally, I don't like being on prescription medications. I don't have to be. But with fibromyalgia, it's rough. If I'm not on anything, then I can't do anything. I can't get anything done. <laughs> I believe if I had enough cannabis, I would be able to get through the day just fine. But <laughs> with how much it is for medical marijuana in Florida right now, until I can grow my own, I don't think that I'm going to be able to properly treat my fibromyalgia with cannabis. <sighs> if I could eat edibles all day and do dabs, then yes, I would be fine. And still productive, but you know, pain free. But alas, <laughs> I'm waiting for Florida to let us grow, but I highly doubt that's gonna happen. They want their money way too bad. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I just wanted to make sure that my camera didn't stop working for my 4K quality videos. It uh, it likes to shit out after 10 minutes, so I have to like go every 10 minutes and fix it. Anyways, more fibromyalgia. Um, more of this, the symptoms of what fibromyalgia causes. It not only causes the widespread pain and the muscle pain and the muscle weakness, but it also causes um, brain fog, <laughs> awful brain fog. And when I'm talking brain fog, what I mean by brain fog is you know that typical thing, like an older person, when they walk into a room, I mean, everybody does this. When you walk into a room, forget what you're doing. But like, imagine that all day, <laughs> like multiple times a day, forgetting what you're doing, why you came in the room, forgetting how to do something that you've done 90 million times before, um, forgetting, you know, certain things about doctor's appointments, forgetting just little bitty things that you wouldn't normally forget. It, it causes that too. It causes a lot of brain fog. Which is hell to deal with and embarrassing, honestly. Because <sighs> you feel like your brain is just failing you. <laughs> and you can't really do anything about it. And the shitty thing about Lyrica is it makes it worse. <laughs> it actually, uh, Lyrica, one of the side effects of it is the brain fog actually being worse. And memory issues. So I kind of have to like, do I want to have worse memory issues? Or do I want to not be in pain as much? It's a ride, that's for sure. Um, and it also causes a lot of mood 
disturbances too. And I mean, I don't think that it is caused by the fibromyalgia in the sense of, like you're just tired of being in pain and it, it reflects emotionally. I try not to cry, <laughs> but it does. It's hard to be in pain every single day and know that it's a lifelong thing it's not gonna get any better all right they straighten this all up but yeah it causes a lot of mood disturbances as well um, depression anger, anxiety, all of those things, um, they're not already there, you know, and tuned up, then it, it, it does cause that too. Because like I said, being, being in pain every day, it, it's rough. Having that brain fog every day, it's rough. And another thing that's rough is a, um, most people that deal with fibromyalgia at least have one person in their life that doesn't believe what's going on or downplays the person's symptoms and that's really not their fault because uh my mom had fibromyalgia like i said and i was really rude to her before because i didn't understand what it was like uh, i knew that she had fibromyalgia but i didn't i didn't get what it was like to be in chronic pain all day i didn't understand what that meant and you, you really don't I don't see how you could unless you have felt that pain. Unless you've been like hit by a car, <laughs> then you would know what that feels like or, you know, just have been in the hospital in full body pain for whatever reason, like then you would know what it feels like. So that that's another rough thing too, living with fibromyalgia is, you know, there will always be someone who, who doesn't believe and what's going on, whether that's someone in your family or someone close to you, your partner, your parents, or your doctor, most likely your doctor, <laughs> um, or just people in general. Uh, fibromyalgia is such a, has such a stigma to it. A lot of people for the longest time just said, oh, it's all in your head. But now, you know, science is starting to come out more that it's not <laughs> just all in people's heads. It's an actual physical thing going on. So that's another rough thing that you have to live through with fibromyalgia is the constant backlash of, you know, being told that your feelings aren't justified or are not valid. But I hope that, you know, in the future, moving forward, that there is more research out there and then we do find out more about fibromyalgia and you know if we don't find a cure to it or a better treatment at least something definitive saying this is a test that says this person has this you know disorder fibromyalgia it's not just in everyone's head it can't just be cured with um you know anti-anxiety medication or antidepressants it's not that it's not this person was so depressed that their whole body hurts now. That's not what fibromyalgia is. So I really hope in, you know, moving forward that research helps us get there. So, you know, people in the fibro community feel more accepted and, you know, feel valid in the way that they feel. They don't have to struggle with doctors or family members or whatever to get them to understand that something is really going on. I didn't mean to cry on you guys. Good grief. That was not my intention at all. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Um, so apologize for letting my emotions get there for a second, but hey, that's living with fibromyalgia. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that's, that's how I said I wanted to start this video is explaining what it's like to live with fibromyalgia. And it is full of emotions. Let me tell you that. <laughs> lots of crying, lots of getting through it, but hey. I look at it this way, I was born to be strong, 
obviously. The things that I've gone through, the domestic abuse, the parental abuse, the fucking everything. <laughs> and now fibromyalgia. But. Pain in any form makes us stronger. So, it sucks to live with fibromyalgia, but it does give me, like, I do have that that attitude about it that it makes me strong I'm a strong person that I deal with it that I can get through that chronic pain and not you know lay in bed all day and can't move or do anything like I, I do my best and I know that it'll get better okay sorry I'm gonna check in with myself for a second. But yeah, okay. Is there anything else that I wanted to cover? Um, no. There's some days that I feel like I can't get out of bed. And then there's some days that I feel like I could do anything. I could get a whole bunch of videos done or I can clean my whole house so I can do things. And then there's days I just literally feel like I can't do shit. <laughs> and that's another thing with fibromyalgia is if you ever have a friend, family member, anything, whatever, um, and you're trying to like understand what's going on, you're like, why are you fine one day and then the next day you can't do anything and you're in pain? It sounds like you don't want to do anything with me. It's not that. It really is like that. <laughs> one day you'd be fine, absolutely fine, you can do a whole bunch of stuff, and then the next day it feels like fucking you can't do anything, you can't move, your body's all stiff. Everything's in pain. And you don't know until you wake up that morning how it's going to be. I mean, at least that's how it is for me. My 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 symptoms are not controlled. Um, I know that there are people out there who have lived with fibromyalgia for years, and they've gotten on a strict regimen that works well for them, and they have flare-ups every so often. Um, so far, I'm living in a flare-up. Um, my symptoms are not controlled yet. They're getting there. They're definitely not as bad as they were two years ago, but yeah, my symptoms are not controlled yet, so I live in a flare-up, basically. But I have more days that I feel like crap as opposed to not feeling like crap. And everybody with fibromyalgia is different. Some people can be fine for a long time and only have flare-ups like every, every once in a while, and then some people, like me, are in flare-ups constantly. It kind of just depends. Everyone's pain with fibro is different too. Like, I say widespread pain, but there's certain like pressure points. I can't remember where exactly they all are, but I know like right here in the, not pressure points, pain points. There we go. <laughs> pain points. There's some like here in the chest, um, the tops of your legs, like your back and certain points. And those are like the points of like, that's where they can tell if you have fibromyalgia is if you're having pain in those points. I get them mostly in my shoulders, my back, the front right here, the tops of my legs. Yeah, basically. And well, my, yeah, my calves too. And basically just my legs. <laughs> my legs and my back and my shoulders um, are the worst for me. My neck too. Um, some people, they just get in their shoulders. Some people, they just get in certain places. It's different for everybody. Yeah, um, I don't know if there's anything else that I want to say, honestly. My joint is gone. And I think, I don't know, have I covered all the symptoms? Widespread pain, muscle spasms, memory fog, the mood issues, the senses being heightened. Sleep disturbances, too. It's really, really hard to sleep with fibromyalgia. But, I mean, that should be kind of understood. If you're in a lot of pain, it's hard to sleep. So, that's kind of how that works. Um, I think I covered all of it. Living with fibromyalgia. Like I said, it's different for everybody. Um, what living with fibromyalgia is like. Some people, they only have flare-ups every once in a while. Some people, it's every day. So, how you live with fibromyalgia is different. Some people take opiates and that works for them. Some people just do yoga and that works for them. Everybody's completely different. Um, yeah. 
So if you meet somebody with fibromyalgia, I hope that you're more informed on what's going on with them. And I hope if anything ever happens with you and you start having these symptoms, that you can go to a rheumatologist or a pain management doctor, or just your regular doctor and say, hey, like, I think this is what's going on with me. Um, I need some help. So, and don't be embarrassed to ask for that help. And if you live with fibromyalgia, um, I hope you're making it through. And we're warriors, most definitely. Anybody with chronic pain, you are a warrior. <laughs> And we'll get through it together. So this has been my very emotional video. <laughs> I did not hurt it. intended for it to be that way. It was supposed to be educational. Hopefully it was both. Hopefully it was very educational. Also a little bit emotional. I'm planning on doing a series um, like this about my different chronic conditions because I, I have more than one. I live with epilepsy, uh, PTSD, fibromyalgia. I'm also, I'm having a new psychological evaluation because some other things that might be going on, um, caused by trauma. So yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on. And some of the things that I have, a lot of people don't really understand it exactly what it is. So I want to do my part to educate others on what having these conditions is like and how cannabis helps with all of these things. All right, I hope you enjoy it. And if you have chronic conditions, I hope you make videos like this too. Um, let others know what, what it's like. Let's do something good with what we got going on. All right, thanks guys.